You know, I was, I was just considering this morning in, the, in Genesis chapter 1, God uses three creative words when he says he created man. He, he created in the beginning, he barad, he created. The Hebrew word is bara. He created. And then in scripture it says he yitzard or he fashioned man. He created, he fashioned him. And then from man he brought forth a partner. A, a co-partner in his eternal plan of bringing forth eternal souls. Eternal beings created in his image and his likeness. Fashioned in all that he himself is. And so the scripture says he benot or he built. He built from Adam this partner. This counterpart if you would. And then when we look at Jesus Christ, the eternal word, God created all things by him. And then he, the eternal word, became flesh and we know him as Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus, who is as it were a stone that the builders, the great architect and crafters of the constructions of God and the earth looked at and said, oh, that is a worthless stone stone and cast it aside but the Lord said no I'll raise him up and I'll make him the very means by which the building is constructed I will build my house and so father takes us by his wonderful love and grace to the creator the eternal word the, the logos the definition of God the revelation of God the unveiling of God and he fashions us anew in this new creation. He fashions us after his image and likeness, having already created us. The Redeemer now fashions us after himself. Hallelujah. And he builds us up together with him as a holy habitation unto God. <laughs> ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo -hoo! As, the, as the high priest and the Sanhedrin were doing their best to, after the, their own understanding, to instruct the people in the ways of God, and how to walk with God, and by and large telling them the mitzvah, the works that they needed to do to earn salvation, Jesus comes along and says, no, 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 I'm going to give it to you as a gift. I want you to be seated. No, I want to give it to you as a gift. See, there is absolutely nobody in here that has anything really that you earned or got for yourself. You didn't earn coming into existence. You just got here. <laughs> in earn it. In earn being created. You didn't sit down at the table and master plan yourself. You were created, you were brought forth after a law and an ordinance of the living God. And that law and that ordinance that Father, you can keep playing, that, that ordinance and that law that the Father had established, of course, was that we should be a family with Him in a relationship with Him, a kind of relationship and a kind of lifestyle that you would never want to end. Not one that you're kind of tired of, bummed out about. Hey, man, this ain't working out like we thought. This is, what we, this is not what we signed up for. But, but one that was so beautiful and so wonderful and so full of life and so full of life. The only way you can try to even begin to describe so full of life, Jesus, Jesus as it were, was at a loss for words, if you, might, or could, if you could imagine that. Within the framework of, of, the, of the human understanding, he said abundant life. So in this realm of fullness of life that God purposed us to have, there's not a single soul that would ever want one moment of it to end. And so Father in His love gave us the gift of living forever just like Him. The only difference is He has no beginning and we have one. He has no beginning, He has no end. We have a beginning and He created us so that there would never be a loss. God doesn't like loss. Huh? You know, listen, there's some people can't even stand to lose their toothbrush. They keep all their toothbrushes. They don't want it. They don't want to lose nothing. There's some people that we just call them pack rats because they just don't want to, everything they, they got, they just can't handle losing it. 
And then, then you take it up to another level beyond the toothbrush, a puppy dog, or an, an animal that you love, or then take it up another level, a human being. Now, Satan fights hardest against this because this is the most beautiful of all relationships, and therefore, that's why many people have been so hurt, so deeply wounded in the area of which they cared the most, that they just run away and hide and have more of a love for animals than, than they have for other human beings. They don't... They don't understand that the enemy of their soul has done everything that he possibly can do to destroy this wonderful opportunity that Father has given to us in him. And the Lord Jesus comes along in the context of man lost and, is, and undone with the broken relationships and the messed up lives and Satan afflicting in them and tormenting them with all kinds of hellacious things making them believe that that's what they want and need if they're going to be happy. And Jesus says, I've come to deliver you from wrong thinking, from wrong behavior, from wrong concepts, from wrong ideas, from wrong relationships. I've come to deliver you from everything that has afflicted you, from all the things that have tormented you. I've come to do this for you and give this to you free for the asking. Yeah. So here is all the Pharisees and, and the Sadducees and the rulers of Israel, the Sanhedrin and the high priest, trying to describe to the people of God how to change their heart, how to change their way, how to somehow earn an entrance into this awareness, this revelation, this, this encounter with God that causes them to see all of life differently and behave differently. And Jesus comes and declares, no. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And I'm going to give these things to anybody whosoever will, no matter how messed up they are, for the asking. I believe that that is a, 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 an assault to the pride of life. I believe that that is one of the greatest things to challenge the arrogance of men and self-reliance. And so, so many people can't even begin to believe. All I need to do is ask. All I need to do is be willing and God will make of me a new creation. God who created me will now come by the asking and fashion me after his own likeness and renew me again after his image. Give me the gift of holiness and give me the gift of righteousness. I want you to open your Bibles with me to Acts chapter 4. And as I go on, I'm going to begin to describe to you some things that the Lord spoke to me just a few minutes ago as an interpretation of tongues. See, I believe in all the gifts of the Spirit. I believe you can't have church without the gifts of the Spirit. Because the Lord put in His church the manifestation of the Spirit's given to every person. And we'll be, we'll be talking more about that tonight, of how that you can actually be liberated from your religion, your self-interest, your own things, your own, you know, doubt and unbelief, to be free to begin to function and flow in this glorious realm. And then we're going to have, at the end of this week, Friday night, we'll have a school of the Spirit that if you'll come with a hungry and a thirsty heart, you can actually begin to have these things immediately take place in your life, giftings activated in your life as the Word of God goes forth, just as it was on the, that day when Peter went into Cornelius' house and began to declare to Cornelius the will of God, the truth of God's Word. It's powerful. The truth of God's word to a hungry heart and a listening ear activates the faith of God on the inside. And then the miracle expressions and manifestation of God the Holy Ghost begins to be revealed and begins to flow out of those who will receive without any pre-preparation. Cornelius did not have any pre-preparation. He didn't have anybody say, well, this is what's going to happen to you. Da, 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 It's going to start happening. He didn't have any examples. Peter didn't even realize that the gift of the Holy Ghost was available. He didn't realize that tongues or any manifestation of the Spirit would even happen in the lives of those who are outside of the family of Abraham. And so he was just as shocked as anybody else. It doesn't take the faith of a man when the faith of God is present. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't take some special anointing on a person when the Holy Ghost is being given place 
to speak what it is he wants to speak and is being given place in the heart to begin to move and to produce that which is the gift. Father, by his own power, by his own good pleasure, doing something in our life that shows forth his glory, who gave to us everything that we need by his divine power, and I'm telling you, that's resource enough, that we might be able to show forth his glory, his virtue. People make it very complicated. Oh, well, I need to go to a special school. I need to go and do this thing or that thing, stand a special prayer line. No, all you need to do is hear the fear of faith. As God, the Holy Ghost speaks it. With a hungry heart. See, the only, the only kind, the only realm that can hook up with God's word of faith is a hungry heart. The realm of a hungry heart. The, heart, the, heart, the realm of a hungry, believing heart. All that, took, all that it took for the woman who was a Syrophoenician. She was a Phoenician. She was a descendant of Jezebel herself. She was a descendant of all of those who brought, taught Israel to worship other gods that were actually even the worst kinds of gods because they were fashioned after God Yehoah himself. But this descendant had saw uh, of Jezebel, of the Phoenicians, had beheld the goodness and the love of Jesus Christ and knew that he had the power and that he had authority with God and realized he was the one. And so she came with a hungry and believing heart in awe of him, in awe of his presence. Father wants you to know that, that he's here. Christ Jesus wants to reveal to you that he's here. That he's present right here. The Holy Spirit is here with us and in us. That you don't have to believe somehow that God's far, far away. You don't have to be somehow detached from the reality of that which is going on in heaven right now. You choose, however. If you're going to have an earthly existence, you're going to be detached. But if you go ahead and go ahead and step over into this heavenly one, things will change in your life. God told me, by tongues this morning concerning his church because I, I received words from heaven concerning the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not necessarily does it apply to people here, but it's to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord said, my people love pleasure more than they love me. And what we find in this, because this is the last days where seducing spirits and doctrines of men begin to prevail more and more because ultimately this thing is running to its ultimate ruin where men will ultimately want to try to kill God and we describe that in the battle of Armageddon in the book of Revelation. But the scripture says men will be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And the Lord says my people love pleasure more than they love me. They stand at the crossroads of temptation where they're offered a pleasure of sin for a season and that is more attractive to them than the outpouring of the fullness of life and the gift that I have freely given of all that I possess. But I'm going to tell you right now, the Spirit of the Lord began to speak to me in a strong way yesterday, began to describe to me with greater revelation what God's people who will begin to allow the Holy Ghost to do what it is He says He wants to do through them, how their prayers can become effective. How that we can take the souls of men, especially the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, and begin to present it before the throne of grace. And God will cause His Holy Ghost conviction. He will cause an awesome awe, awe on, a, of awareness of the presence of God to suddenly come to where men will begin to shake in their she seats. They'll begin to shake in their very depths of their being. They'll quake by the power of God. And they'll turn back unto the Lord because there should be no revival until there is a turning back. And there should be no awakening until His church is revived. For the church itself, uh, the church must be the one that represents the will and the purposes of God and the means by which people are then brought into the covenant and kept by the power of God because they're at that place taught to observe all that He has commanded. Father is reserving a, a great awakening 
awakening. He's reserving a lost and a dying world to a moment in time where the church will be revived and turned back to his ways so that they also in turn may then teach the lost that God brings in in his harvest the ways of the Lord. Otherwise, it would be a harvest that would be ruined. It would be a harvest that would be set out and be molded and fit for nothing. It would be salt subjected to the elements that would lose its savor and have no value or meaning. And Father, God's people must understand as the Father has put the weight of this responsibility upon the shoulders of His church. And over the, over the generations of time, there, since the day of the cross and the resurrection and ascension of Jesus, there's been one or two or a few that have realized this. And they have arisen to, to, in response to this great call, this holy calling, this wonderful vocation of representing God. And out of them sprang up movings of the Spirit of the Lord in the earth. And today, Father is calling for a people, anyone who will listen. His eyes go to and fro, searching. He's not really picky or particular. He's looking for anyone who will believe and cooperate with him that he might show himself mighty upon their behalf. These are the last days. And those who believe that in these are the last days, they can come to a place in God where they'd be made strong. And God said to us by his servant, prophet Daniel, in the last days, his people would be strong and they would do great exploits. Oh, Sabata de Stikaya. To be able to step into the mantle that God gave to the church to turn men from the power of Satan to God. To turn them from darkness to light. To turn them from blindness, the mind-blinding spirits of demon power. The lies of devils and of men. And to the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. All we have to do is begin to allow our hearts and our lives to be arrested by the Holy Spirit. And God would cause us to have this encounter that he's purposed for us to have. Each man, God has purposed that each man encounter Jesus Christ by the Holy Ghost who's come to reveal him and make him known. Men's hearts are turned to religion. Men's hearts are turned to those things that they themselves can create and fashion and build. And Father's calling us to turn to him instead and let him strike us with the reality of life and his presence and his person. You know, the, the Lord made something so real to me recently as he began to, to talk to me out of the innermost being, out of the belly. Just like he's talking to me right now as I speak by the Spirit of the Lord. That's how the Lord talks to me. Somebody said, have you heard audible voice? A couple of times, but he talks to me like this. Just right out of this. Realm, this is how he wants to talk to you. Just right out of this realm, you participating with him. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, I want to, desc I want to describe to you and, to and cause you to know and understand what is the fear of the Lord. What is my fear? For it is an awesome awareness of my presence it is to be captivated by the awe of who I am. People want to make God's fear the fear of the Lord these other things. Many of them good, and many of them this theological and ideas, concepts aloof from the reality of an encounter. Theological distillations of the intellectual mind and the logics and the rational thinking based upon the experience of a human being, not the revelation of God. There is a realm far greater than your educated centers. There is a realm far greater <laughs> an understanding that only God can give. <laughs> All we have to do is be willing to come and participate with the reality that heaven is ours right now, that the kingdom of God is here, that the, we've been translated, delivered from the power of darkness, from the kingdom of this world, and translated the kingdom of their, their dear son, no longer to be captivated and assimilated and neutralized by earthly interests that paralyzes us from the neck down. So that we cannot move as the men and the women of God. Expressed image of his person. Huh. You know the Lord said to be conformed to the image of the Son. 
That's what he predestinated, predetermined us to be. Why? That he might rejoice in the household of the brethren. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. <laughs> that he might sing praises in the assembly. Hallelujah. Saying, I am the children which the Lord hath given me. <laughs> ah, I pray in Jesus' name that every eye will be opened in the church. That you may begin to see Jesus worshiping before the throne of the Father. That you may begin to see the one who ever lives to make intercession for your souls. That you may step into the realm of this divine glory which he gave his own body and flesh to be as a, an entryway into, a passageway into, a veil, a door, an access. We have so many ideas of what we want to be. How we want to be seen, how we want to be viewed, and how we want to be used. Nobody can be used by God for anything until they stand before the fire of his presence. I want to spend some time talking about Peter this morning. The one who stood outside the halls of the mighty in the earthly realm. And being interrogated as Jesus was offering his soul and his body for the sins of all humanity. Saying, do you know him? And he denied him. Swearing with an oath. Even cursing the name of Jesus. To stand up before the assembly. Those archae, those authorities that were there in Israel, the high priest, the Sanhedrin, and to say, this same Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth, hath made this man every bit whole, and there is no way that anyone could ever be saved but by his name. Wow. The difference between a man who just knows about Jesus and even walked around with him and beheld him to a man who received a revelation from God, the Holy Ghost, of who he actually, Christ Jesus is. And of course, Peter had some great moments. I, when Jesus said, well, who do you say that I am? He said, you're the son of the living God. He had some great moments. He had some great doctrines. He had some great sermons to preach. He had some great healing meetings. <laughs> he had some touch of heaven upon his life just being around Jesus. But an event took place <laughs> where he not only stood before the fire of God, he so encountered the fire of God that the fire of God consumed him. Consumed his emotions, his passion, his thinking, his perception, his ideas. His notions, his desires, his wants, his need. Somebody said, how do I get hungry for God? The same way, place, and the same way you get faith for him, from him. How do you get anything? Ask him. Somebody said, oh, the Bible says, oh, that if we ask God anything, he would do it. And I asked him for a new car, and I didn't get it. Well, you asked him for dust when he wanted to give you the riches of the universe. You asked him for meaningless nothingness, a miss, a fantasy, a phantom. And he had for you the reality of the ages, the means by which he framed the universe. I believe with all of my heart that Father is going to raise up a people desperate to allow Jesus to be revealed. All your notions, all your vocabulary, all your ideas for the most part are going to be radically changed. Oh yes, much of what you say is right, but it has no reality to it. <laughs> God breathes by His Spirit into our lives a living being, the reality of it, which no longer lifeless or empty or dead or without witness or without proof. We want a zombie to move about us. A lifeless body. God has come to breathe into the church and has already the breath of his life, the Holy Ghost, ah, the Spirit of the Lord, the wind of heaven. 
so that all the charismatic and Pentecostal and all the various different ideas of things left over from the real moving of God would no longer be meaningful. But an encounter with the living God is all that is purposeful for our life. In Acts chapter 4, just look here with me. I'm believing God that you're going to begin to utilize and benefit from all that God has supplied to you. There's an inheritance been given to you of an abundant life, of a fullness of joy, of a peace that passes understanding, of a love that goes beyond all knowledge, of the activity of interacting and moving in and living with and following and being led by uh, the living God of recognizing that he's with you and in you. Listen to me. Your eyes will be blinded that he's with you and in you so long as the cares of this earth consume you. There can be no mixture. A trust has got to be completely changed from a, a mixture to completely relying upon God. That's why the Lord says you got to even get rid of your concern about food and your concern about clothing and concern about all the things that are so important to your uh, earthly existence. Understand, I'm going to take better care of you than you could ever take care of yourself. And so many people have a hard time even beginning to believe that. Yeah. But it's step number one. And walking it out with God, he's going to say, I want you to come out from among them. And I want you to be separate. That's what he said to Abraham. I want you to come out from among them. And I want you to go to a place that I will show you. I'm not going to tell you. Just walk that way. Follow me. But where are we going? Come. I want you to come out. I want you to walk another way. I want you to live another kind of life. I want you to step out of the realms of an earthly existence that is temporal into the eternal, into the heavenly, into the place where I dwell. Father has made a way now so that we can stand here and gaze at him, stare at him. God, just stand there and... When men start gawking at God, they'll stop gawking at lust. I just gawking. Just... Amazed. Women too. You stop having covetous desires for earthly things when all of a sudden you see the riches that's centered around his name. <laughs> and then you begin to covet another thing, <laughs> that which is right to covet. <laughs> then, ah, oh, this glory of heaven will flood your soul and nothing else will matter. When you have fullness of joy and peace that passes understanding and love that goes beyond all knowledge, you care not for anything else. All the lust and interest of this earthly existence ceased to have any value to you. You stepped over in the true riches seat. Ha ha ha. ha. Hallelujah. Mandeya. Mande resutara. Thank you, Father, for the anointing of the Holy Ghost that you placed upon anyone who has ever would believe. Just by the asking. Just by the asking. The one whose eyes are purer than to behold iniquity. The one who is holy of holies, holiness of holinesses. The one who's separated from everything that is evil and everything that is death and everything that is wrong. He says, come on in. I make you one with me. All that I have, I give to you. I love you so much. Whatever you ask me, I'll do. And we sit around <laughs> with carnal interest. And Papa wants to give you a revelation. He wants... He wants to break you free of your addiction to human exaltation. To human praise. To the dignity of your own name. To where you become lost in the glory of His. Captivated. Ha -ha, by that inheritance that we have in Christ Jesus. Who's crowned us with a crown of loving kindness and tender mercies, who's given to us the robe of his own divine majesty and glory. <laughs> These aren't just words. These things are fashioned by God and handed to us as a gift to whosoever would believe.
Christ Jesus alone heals men from their brokenness. Heals men from their sickness and their disease. Heals men from their crippledness. Heals men from the curses that have been placed upon them, not by God, but by a demon power of hell. You get rid of the curse out of your life, you'll be totally successful in everything. You get rid of the leaven, you're going to heaven. <laughs> you have a means that sin would be removed. You may stand before the judgment seat of Christ and be blameless. Huh. I'm going to tell you right now, today you're going to get a test. We're going to test you as to whether or not you may stand before the judgment seat of Christ with no conscience of sin, blameless. In the Spirit of the Lord, you would declare the Word of God and those things that are as they really are will be made known to you. And all not for the reason to prove you wrong, but to get you right. So that you will no longer have any sense of sin, no consciousness of it. That the offense will be totally removed by the body of his flesh. <laughs> that, 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 that by one offering you should forever be perfected, sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ and by the spirit of holiness. No matter how messed up you are, no matter how problematic things have been in your life, Father comes to you today with the opportunity to receive a gift of holiness. True holiness. True. Not Hindi holiness. True holiness. Not Buddhist holiness. Not religious holiness. Jewish holiness. Muslim holiness. Christian holiness. True holiness. And righteousness, having fashioned us, having fashioned, he yitzarred man from the fine dust. God created, he breathed, and God created uh, with the breath of his life by the spirit of the living God. Then he reached down with his hand and he yitzarred, he formed, he shaped man in his image and his likeness. He reached down with his hand. Christ Jesus reached down with the power of his grace. God the Father reached down with the power of his grace. The Holy Spirit reached down with the power of his grace, shaped us and renewed us in the likeness of his image and righteousness and true holiness. It's about time you just go ahead and believe what God has said instead of, try, instead of trying to perfect yourself. Instead of trying to make yourself more fit. Have you begun by the miracle new birth of the Holy Ghost just by the asking? Now to be made perfect by the doing of your own human ability. No. By the asking God the Holy Ghost came and shaped a new creation, brought forth a new man. Form of Christ Jesus, <laughs> the new nature, the divine nature. And so by the same Holy Ghost and by the same Spirit, He perfects everything that concerns us. He grows us. He matures us into everything that He's purposed us to be in Him forever. God's training you. Father wants you to step into the beauty and the splendor of that which He has in the eternities uh, that, uh, 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 of His glory. And, and you, just, you just be ready, prepared unto every good work both now and then. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Well, Peter and John, they were just preaching the gospel. And while they were preaching the gospel, of course, what happens when people preach the gospel happened and a crippled man began to walk? <laughs> Hallelujah. That's what happened. Crippled physically and spiritually. Ooh, just hearing the word. Hallelujah. And even about, you know, this person, he came to church expecting nothing but some money, so to speak. He was just begging alms at the gate called Beautiful. That sounds like a good place to hang out, though. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Great church, gate called Beautiful. Church of Jesus Christ, gate called Beautiful. But, but at any rate, he's there. And John, Peter and John passed him by and said, Silver and gold have we done, but such as we have, we give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. <laughs> I think that is so amazing how God is purposed to so identify the living God as a man. From a little small podunk backwoods town in Israel. 
<laughs> Nazareth. Uh, uh, one that was overrun with more secularism than probably any other town. But you know, sometimes God can get more done in the midst of secularism than he can in religion. And I should say that again, but I'm going to just let you think about it. My, not much could get done in Jerusalem. But here we are. And uh, the scripture says in verse 6 that Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, and John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. Verse 7 of Acts chapter 4. And when they had set them in the midst of them, speaking of the disciples, Peter and John, they asked, here we go. They're, getting them, they're, they're setting themselves up for the gospel message. By what power? Uh, uh, by what name have you done this? And Peter filled with the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to tell you right now. You cannot bear witness of Jesus. You cannot declare who he is. It won't be meaningful. It'll be like sound of brass and tinkling cymbal. It will be hollow sounding. It'll be like you trying to convince somebody to buy a car that you know is broken down. Unless you've been baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost to speak it. Hallelujah. This is what Jesus said. And God's people are going to have to start doing it God's way. Somebody said to me, well, how important is it to get all God's word right? How important is it to really get it all right anyways? Come on. How about all people can't read? I said, well, this is how important it is to God. He said, don't add one word to it. Don't take one word away from it. That's, uh, that sounds like that's pretty accurate. God's way. Listen, I was talking to a man of God one day. We we're just talking about the moving of God. He said, it seems like we're missing whole paragraphs, doesn't it? I said, well, I thought I was thinking more along the line of whole books, not just chapters. Whole books have been, been, been missing. Well, what will happen if we'll take heed to do it just like God showed the pattern of us, uh, to, to us in Christ Jesus? I mean, what would, have Moses, what would have it turned out if Moses would have done it and built and erected the tabernacle and the system of worship different from the pattern that was given to him on the mount? Would it have worked? What would have happened before that if Noah would have said, listen, I don't like your design for an ark, God. I got, a, I, got another, I got another particular design in mind I think is going to be more accommodating to the family. It wouldn't have floated. God's glory wouldn't have showed up. Once they had done everything according to the pattern, according to the exact detail which God had given to Moses in the mount, all of a sudden, then that moment in time, right there, as we begin to see the last preparations of Leviticus chapter 8, <laughs> a glory is about to show up. The power of God is about to be revealed. Once every person was set in order, every minister according to that which was described by David, suddenly the glory of God filled the place and nobody was able to stand in the midst. I'm telling you, we've seen, we're not seeing the power of God like it's described in the Word of God because we want to do it our own way. We're not willing to go with the pattern. We're not willing to listen to what Father said and when he fashioned it and proclaimed it. This is the way it works. Here it is. Walk ye in it. But what happens when it becomes the people that are tired of the talk and into the doing? Ha! Huh. What happens when they come the people who are no interested, no longer interested in who they're going to get married to, what they're going to eat, how big their house is going to be, whether or not they're going to get a better job, whether or not they're going to be liked or disliked? What happens when all that stuff, meaningless, temporal stuff, passes away in the realms of your desires and thinking? And now you have a heavenly vision. Uh, woo. You have a home in heaven. You now, you now, uh, ha, you can afford anything, but you chose to live in a tent because you want a testimony. You're seeking a kingdom whose builder and maker is God. You're on your way to a place called Zion. Are you on your way to a place called the New Jerusalem? A heavenly realm is that which you exist in. Where your eyes are open, you can look out and see Father coming, and you can understand the manner of the time of your visitation. You can hear his voice and see his similitude. And have Father say, shall I hide from Abraham that which I should do, seeing as I shall make him father of many nations, seeing as the whole of the earth will be blessed through him. And you and I have come into the same kind of an opportunity, same kind of covenant, of which he could not be made perfect until, we got, until the church came, until Jesus died, which you and I are part of right now. 
You won't be sitting around with a sad and sorrowful countenance anymore. Sad, sorrowful, and sick belongs to Cain because there is an offering that lies at your door and you're unwilling to take it up. There is a means and a provision that God has made and you were, no, you were, no. You're too interested in what you want to do. Hallelujah. See, the Holy Ghost always messes up my sermons. <laughs> and I enjoy it. I would have it no other way. Hallelujah. Shukoroman Hallelujah. <laughs> you see, if you had understood the points that I was thinking I was going to make out of Acts chapter 4 this morning, you'd realize the Spirit of the Lord is talking directly to you. He's tailor-making this message and this time for you because God's come to serve you. God's come to perfect you. God's come to change everything so that it would be conformed unto His way, to come to bless you, to get the curse off of you. But sometimes people hear the Word of God and they refuse to receive that which was their blessing. They refuse to hear that which would be the turning points of their life. Oh, that our hearts were set on God. Oh, that only takes one encounter with Him. It gives you a new heart and a new spirit. But you got to watch out at the same time because there can be a backsliding. There can be a going back into the world because you sit and you listen to the counsel of ungodly men. And because you begin, all of a sudden you begin to stand in the way of sinners. And now those things which God had established in us by His Spirit, which you had written upon our heart and upon our mind, that we would do them suddenly become faded in our thinking and our passions and our emotion but today in the name of Jesus Christ I pray that the finger of God will just right again <laughs> just right over top with a fire of his presence all those things that's already engraved on the inside of you be his purpose his statutes his statutes chok is a Hebrew word it's a powerful word chok chokin his statutes, or his decrees, it's what he's decreed. He decreed, ways, you should come up this far, tide, you come this far, and then further. I was looking at the full moon, yeah, and I was, yesterday I said, Lord, I just thank you so much for the moon and the blessing that it has upon the earth that you decreed. For seed time and for harvest, for the limitations of the tide and for its impacts and effects upon all of life as we know it here upon the earth. God's ordinances, he decreed. God has ordinances, decrees. It's called statutes in the scripture. Statutes. The psalmist kept saying, oh, that I might have a heart to, to know your statutes, to learn them. Oh God, give me understanding and I shall keep your statutes. Your decrees, your ordinances, that which you have demanded should be. And you're happy that the tide will obey him today. Otherwise, everything about your life would be disrupted because it would, it, the water would flow all the way to the mountain and past it. Can you imagine that? The earth would be washed completely every day. The water would collect into a place and there would be a tsunami every day. Every day. His decrees. His judgments are righteous and true altogether. He's decreed something for our life. And now he's established it, having written it upon the tables of our heart, upon our mind. The Lord said, my people love pleasure more than they love me. That's what the Lord says. All of a sudden, when you're standing at this crossroads of temptation and the iniquity, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life is trying to draw you in to demonic pleasures, the pleasures of this world, love God more. Ask him to open up your eyes so that you might see his, his realms of glory, his majesty, the pleasure that is in, at his right hand, the joy, the, the fulfillment, the fullness. God wants to fill you up so full that you have room for nothing else. He wants to fill you up with all his fullness. Hallelujah. Satan won't have a chance if you'll begin to hunger and seek after the things of God's kingdom and of his righteousness, of that which is made available freely to all, whosoever gets real with God, because God's real. He's not going to play with no pretend. He's the spirit of truth. He's not going to mix it up with any kind of lie or deceit. 
God doesn't like religion. He's into relationship. <laughs> he doesn't like to sit around and hear you quote scripture. He wants the kisses. And the hug, Simon wanted to sit around. All the guys with him wanted to sit around and quote scripture. A woman came in, fell down at his feet, and began to uh, wash his feet with her tears and dry them with her hair and kiss him. And he said, this is what I was looking for. The relationship, the love, uh, the reality, the truth, the, the desire, the need to change. <laughs> Peter radically presents though Christ Jesus, whom he denied. Oh, I can just see this as a great event for him. Being filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. It doesn't say, and Peter really stepped up this time. If men would have written this, this is what it would say. And Peter really stepped up this time, really making up for the thing he did in the past. No. Peter not being himself. No more. Peter being under the rule and the charge and the authority now of another. Peter being full of the Holy Ghost. Being under the impulse. Being under the leadership. The guidance. Filled with the Holy Spirit alongside him and in him. Now speaks not of himself. Not by himself but expressly by the person of the living God. He's a different kind of man. He's a, God, he's a Holy Ghost man. He's a man of God. He's a Jesus man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hindus want to talk about the God man. I'm going to talk about Jesus man. Aha. Zutaki namasadeya. I'm a Jesus man. I'm going to make a real specific here. I'm a Jesus Christ man, Holy Ghost man. Take up this identity. Forget about your filthy rags of self-justification and righteousness and identity. My goodness, what a mess. Get rid of that filthy thing. So burn it. Burn it. Why leave it laying on the table talking about it? Nonsense. The thing, that filthy rag. Mmm. That unclean thing. Oh, shikana meate. That broken thing. That crippled thing. That thing that couldn't function. All it could do is sit around in its nasty clothes, begging, begging alms. <laughs> Peter says, rulers of the people, elders of Israel, He's not talking like a scribe no more. He's in charge. That's what God the Holy Ghost does. In every situation, he puts us in charge. Everything, we in charge. My little sister gave me a cup one day. It had Daffy Duck on it saying, who made you the boss? God. The Holy Ghost made me the boss. He puts us in charge. When we're full of the Holy Ghost, there's nothing that intimidates us. Nothing. We stand up in the face of death and command life to come forth. We stand up in the face of impossibility and say, this is going to be easy. Hallelujah. He didn't now, as the one in charge, addresses the leaders and the elders. He says it this way. If we this day be examined of a good deed done to this crippled man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified... Whom God raised from the dead, even him does by the, the even by him did this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone that you examiners said was not fit to be in the building, whom God has taken and made the central piece by which the building is constructed. Hallelujah. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name given under heaven whereby men must be saved. It's not an option. It is the absolute necessity. It is necessary. There is no other means. It's that there's no other way. 
God himself. And here is, has provided you a means of salvation, of deliverance. Even as this man who is crippled, who had no ability to ever walk. Even the same power that delivered him, that healed him or saved him. Is the same power that you must be saved by, delivered by. For your spirit to be made whole. For your life to be made whole. God has come with the means to cure the plague of death, to give you life. Jesus, looking at the people of Israel that day, said this. He said, as they got all excited about the power and the authority that he had, as he was ministering the gospel, four guys got together and brought a friend who was crippled paralyzed. They tore off the roof, set them down in the midst of Jesus. And then Jesus said to him, your sins are forgiven you. He delivered him at that moment in time. At that, me, at that moment, the means by which his sins could be washed away, remitted. Done away with. Here, Acts chapter 10, verse 34. To whom all the prophets give witness that whosoever should believe on him should receive remission of sin. Sins remitted. So that your brokenness, your crippledness, your iniquity, your undoneness would no longer exist so that you could stand before the judgment seat of the living God, sinless, holy, and acceptable, with no, in, no, in any way, remembrance of them. To a level on which God would take and promote us to even judge angels who have never transgressed. Because we find ourselves in this only means of salvation by which all men must be saved. Somebody said, what, what if Jesus isn't the right one? Then you're dead in your trespasses and sin and you lost forever because there is no remedy for sin, not in any religion. Not for sins that are past. I like to talk about the Hindus. I love the Hindus. I, God's given me authority in Hindu nations. To go preach the gospel, to see tens of thousands and thousands and thousands and multitudes and multitudes of people come to Jesus. And I love to talk about the Hindus. 56,000 life cycles. That's something less than a human being to take care of your sin. And then when you come back and you sin again as a human being, 56,000 more again. You know what I'm saying? That's the only cure. Tell Hindus, listen, I have a way. For every one of your sins to be washed away today. So that you can stand before the living God and be holy and acceptable. And be made one with him at this moment. Your sickness and your disease in your body. The curse of sin be removed. The sickness and disease in your spirit. The curse of sin be removed. The law of sin and death being abolished. Hallelujah. The, the complete proclamation. Hallelujah. Of liberation. From the bondage of sin and death. Hallelujah. Jesus, they're standing around saying, who is this that says he can forgive sin? Jesus said, I got the proof. Well, is it easier for me to say, take up your bed and walk? Or your sins be forgiven? But that you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth. Jesus said, whatever you bind on earth should be bound in heaven. My Father will take care of it. Whatever you loose. And then he showed us how to do it. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. Woo. upon it. Now, I know if, you, if your ears are all stuffed up with earthly interest, with your human existence, the arm of flesh limitation, what I say, has a very little value. It's like a, it's like a fairy tale. But should you be willing to be changed by the Spirit of the Lord? Ha! Should you be willing to agree with what God has said, not add to it nor take from it? But to believe what God has spoken, who in the times past spoke by the prophets to our fathers. But in these last days, He's spoken to us by His Son, by whom also He created the worlds. He's spoken to us by his son, who is the heir of all things. Did you know that Jesus is the heir of all things? By whom also he created the world? Let me emphasize heir. 
Because God has given to anyone who would believe the authority of sonship. And in the authority of sonship, we're no longer like children that differ nothing from a servant. Though that child may be the inheritor of everything. But now, having been made sons, having received the sonship of God, we heirs of God. And we co-inheritors of Jesus Christ to do the work of the Father. To execute his will. To show forth his glory. To show forth heaven. That's why he gave. That's why Peter opens up his epistle in, 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 to, the, to the nations. And he, and he declares. Saying. God who by his own divine power. Has given everything that we need. That pertains to life and godliness. Because he's called us to his glory. And to his virtue. His glory. His excellence of character. Can you imagine the excellence of character being seen in the church, radiating with the pre pleasant presence of Jesus? Kindness, huh? humility, goodness all the time, mercy, forgiveness, long-suffering, all those beautiful things. His glory that turned water into wine. I uh, just want you to understand these things have been given as a free gift. You just got to quit doing earth time. You just got to quit doing self time. You must be willing to deny yourself. Somebody said, I want to crucify it. You can't. You no authority, but you can deny it. Only thing you got crucified is you got crucified. The old man got crucified. The former existence, the former life. Not only did he get crucified, he was buried. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the name of the living God. And not only was it buried, hallelujah, and put away, but a new man was, has been raised up. Ah, hallelujah. <laughs> To be, to be alive, to be alive in him. There is no existence outside of him. There is no existence alongside him. In him. People want to have an existence alongside him. Oh, the Lord just and he understands we're all just human beings in a human condition. We're all going to be sinners more or less every day. We're all unrighteous. With the heart, man believes in righteousness not unrighteousness that's antichrist doctrine a heart believes under righteousness even that that is he connected with the heart believing that god raised jesus from the dead because his resurrection is our inward resurrection and eventually the outward resurrection the resurrection unto eternal life of both the body and the enemy true with the mouth man confesses with con mouth the confession is made unto salvation and with the heart, man believes in the righteousness. For if you be, confess with your mouth that God raised up Jesus Christ from the dead. Huh? You should be saved. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. With heart, man believes in the righteousness. Huh? What do you believe? What do you believe? Do you believe that you're your you're, you're own? You're living your own life and you're just trying to fit in alongside of what God wills for you, just trying to do your very best? Or have you been changed and transformed? Have you been bought with a price? Are you now the temple of the living God? Are you purchased possession, having been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, having been made a new creation, have a miracle that took place that unified you with the living God where you're in Him and He's in you? Where you now boldly may say, Christ is in me. My confidence is the divine glory. And I have many more things like this to say. I want everybody to stand with me. I've spoken enough, right? I spoke right now more than Peter spoke to Cornelius' house. Huh? Somebody says, why do we need a lot of preaching? Well, we don't need a lot of preaching, but we need a lot of Holy Ghost preaching because there's a bunch of rocks and they need to be busted up because there's a bunch of fallow and hard ground that needs to be tealed up. Uh, ah, there's, there needs to be some fire of the Word because there's chaff that needs to be burned up. <laughs> Somebody said, ah, you just old-fashioned. Somebody told me the other day, he said, ah, you from the 11th century. 
you so medieval, you so old fashioned. I said, no, 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 man. I'm from like the first century. I'm back all the way to Jesus day. I'm not fifth, 11th century. I'm, I'm all the way back. Don't, don't leave me in the 11th century. I'm all the way, I was born in Jesus. <laughs> ah, I was created. I was created in Christ Jesus when God raised him from the dead. <laughs> Woo! I find all my existence in him. I was a crippled, broken down beggar with nothing but the filthy rags of self-justification. Always justifying myself, making myself right in my own eyes. And Jesus came passing by. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh, and God in his mercy said, call out to him. He's the only one who can save you. He's the one. God is calling in these last days to every man, everywhere, speaking by his only begotten son. Father has promised all these religious ideas, all this false stuff that is preached from the pulpits of the United States of America will be brought to nothing, for Father himself will speak on his own behalf. Father's just looking for a people through which he might bring forth that manifest glory that he's purposed, that he ordained. I'm going to tell you right now, Papa already had it mapped out. Huh? Father already mapped it out. In the, in the, if you would, in the strategy room of heaven, he's mapped out the cure and the remedy for this generation. And all it's going to take is a people who love God more than pleasure. All it's going to take is a people who love God more than their self-interest. Who love God more than their self. Who's devoted to His Word, to His decrees, his ordinances that which he said this is the way it should be the Holy Ghost came to me and said Mark I have described the way I want you to live and I'm here to give you all the ability to conform to my will but you must participate you must want this more than anything else because Satan is going to work against your soul to destroy your soul if he can for all the things that are around you and all the interests that men run after. And I say in response to the Father today as I did then, I give myself to you. I run to you for sanctuary. I, like a man fleeing from a, a great company of enemies that would destroy him I, and ran into the sanctuary and cleaved and laid hold upon the horns of the altar. I laid hold upon the authority of the blood of Jesus Christ and I said, Sanctuary! Protect me, Father! Keep me by thine own power! Keep me by thine own name! I would be taught new ways. I learned to walk in them. To do them. To keep them. Today, God's calling you. He's looking for those who would come and sign up to be a part of those separated unto Him, to follow Him, to be filled with the Holy Ghost, to be continually filled with the Spirit, redeeming the times for the day's evil. He's looking for a people who will no longer do their own will, speak their own word, keep their own charge, but would cease from those things to only speak His word, to do His will, to keep His charge, that he might feed them with the heritage of Jacob and cause them to ride upon their high places in him. I want to read this 
standing there in his presence. In Acts chapter 10. Oh, my God. Acts chapter 10, verse 34. Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive that God has no respect of persons. But in every nation he that fears him and works righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word I say, you know, which was published throughout all Judea and began in Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And we are as witnesses of all these things. Father, right now, is looking for those who would be willing to be fashioned by the fire of His presence. And I'm talking about giving over all your, giving over all your stuff. Your will, your desires keeps you in your doubt. Your mind, your understanding will keep you left out. But a total abandonment would we be willing to come over and be conformed to the Word of God. Be conformed by the Spirit of the living God. To now no longer live for themselves, but with a total surrender heart, allow the Spirit of the Lord to move on them, just as He did on them. And that day, for that day is this day, for it is the day of the Lord. It is the year of the acceptable time of the Lord. And anybody who calls... Listen, I'm going to tell you right now, all this is, is, listen, I'll just tell you, this is all one big gigantic altar right now, and you're standing before the presence of the Lord, and I'm telling you, you living in perilous times right now, these are the last days, it's time to quit diddle-dallying around, it's time to quit pausing and halting between two opinions, it's now time to take a hold of the Word of God and of the Spirit of God, and begin to live fully for God in every dimension of your life, it's time for you to run in terror from all the things of this world, and run in to the high tower, for the righteous run in and are saved into the sanctuary of the Lord, into His presence. Father's looking for a people that he might show forth his glory through. He's looking for a people who would volunteer to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire, to be empowered with his own glory and might, that they might be witness of all these things. That there would begin to be an authority like never before in your heart, in your mouth. So that men would be turned from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God. So that as your prayers would become effectual, that you name them, take the person, name them. That you could actually take that person through prayer and intercession, because it's an authority that God has given us. Begin to bring them before the throne of grace, and all of a sudden, Holy Ghost conviction would begin to overwhelm them. Where before they had not even a thought or a conscious th notion about God or Jesus Christ, or their sin or their state spiritually. All of a sudden, they're gripped with the reality of their need for a Savior. Just that's what will happen to you if you'll let go of yourself and your own life and begin to live the life that God has designed. It's not being a monastic, running to a cave, running to a cavern, running to a will. It's about you right where you're standing, right where you're living right now. To say, no longer is it going to be, be about my life. I'm going to be conformed to the Word, live by the Word, be led by the Holy Ghost. If you're willing, this is what Father is given the invitation for it's louder now than ever before it's more relevant now than ever before I pray that you'll let God the Holy Ghost make you such a radical light that shines like a city set upon a hill Woo! I pray in Jesus name 
that you will so give yourself over to holy emotions and the power of the living God that out of your belly, out of your inner being, will flow forth the forces of heaven like rivers of living water. The very life of God would gush out of you like the mighty streams of heaven. I pray in this day, at this time, you'll say enough with this world. You'll begin to say, Jesus, Jesus, more of Jesus, all of Jesus and none of me. Then you'll begin to lay out your life before God and say, Father, I've written my life, I've planned my life, I've lived my life, but no longer me, oh God. I want to live the life that you designed. I give myself over to it in every dimension that you described. If you'll do this, if you'll do this with a sincere and true heart, I'm going to tell you right now, you will have a meeting of, with God. This is the day of His great visitation. Believe me, this is a day like no other day in the history of men. This is the last days. This is the last moments of the last hour of time. This is all around us. We see the culmination of all those events that were spoken from the beginning by the prophets. And here you stand, and here I stand, with a divine commission and a divine opportunity to be those people that God described in His Word would exist in that day. Those who go out with peace, those who are led forth in joy, those who creation breaks forth into singing and rejoicing over, no longer groaning in sorrow and travail. Oh, but the sons of God being made manifest be revealed with power and authority in you. Oh, Sapaya. Oh, Sapaya. Oh, Sapaya. Oh, Sip all you have to do, I don't care who you are, whether you're here watching on the web by YouTube, all you have to do is begin to say in your heart, be it unto me according to thy word. Even as a young woman, from a family that was forgotten in a backwoods town in Nazareth. Who had almost all together their heritage, their lineage, their genealogies were irrelevant to their condition and time. Suddenly a visitation came to her, an opportunity from God that was beyond all that men could think. And all she could do was say, Oh God, be it according, be it to me according to thy word. The young woman. Young Virgin Mary was that woman, that lady, uh, that maiden. Would you be the handmaiden of the Lord today? Would you be willing to be the servant of the Lord today? Would you be willing to leave everything behind, forsaking everything? And, and, and I'm talking about your notions, your ideas, your concepts, your philosophies, your doctrines, your ideas, your interpretations, all the stuff that you believe about yourself, all the things that you designed in your own mind, would you be willing to leave it today? Would you be willing to leave it behind? So many grip that, they hold on to it, as though their life counted on it. But all it is is a meaningless deception, a distraction that would keep you from heaven. If you'd be willing to forsake everything today, all that stuff that I just named, all that self-identity, that self-existence, and begin to live the Jesus existence, huh? begin to live the godly life, the Holy Ghost-filled life, the Spirit of the living God. Oh, everybody from Joseph to Daniel, when they begin to live out their life in God, all the kings and all the noblemen and all the mighty men of the earth said, these are the men in whom the Spirit of the living God dwells. Oh, that there be such a people today upon the earth that would be willing to live this way. If you are, I don't care who you are, I don't care where you come from, it doesn't matter how long you've known the Lord, whether it's been a day, or a thousand days, it does not matter. God will hear such a request because His eyes go to and fro through the earth right now looking for such a people, looking for such a one, anyone. You may say that I'm a stutterer and I cannot speak, but God will give you a mouth. You may, you may say I'm a thinker and I cannot really think, well God will give you a mind. 
You may say, I am weak and I have no strength. God will give you the strength of the Lord and the power of His might. Catherine Kuhlman and others speaking of this day say God's not looking for golden vessels or for silver vessels. God's not looking for mighty men and noblemen. God's looking for yielded vessels and yielded men. I pray that you'll say with me, find that person in me, oh God. I want no other existence. I want no other title. I want no other value. I want no other meaning than the one you gave, for it is the highest point. And in our heart, begin to say, oh, take this whole world, but give me Jesus. I remember when that song was born back in the Jesus revival, what we call the Jesus move. Oh, take this whole world, but give me Jesus. Oh, look at the beauty of Jesus. The Holy Ghost was showing the beauty of Jesus, the splendor of Jesus, the healer, the savior, the deliverer. Let the waves of revival, let the waves of His presence, let the waves of His glory begin to flood your soul because the response of your heart and the willingness of your life is completely surrendered over to that which He's decreed. That which He decreed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mamakaseya Pataya. Mamakaseya Pataya. Halamosekia. I just want everybody to just come forward and stand up here with me. Just stand here before the presence of the Lord with me. Just at the altar of God. Maybe there's t- people here today, you've not built an altar. Maybe you've never built an altar. Build an altar today. Let that altar be your life. <laughs> be that place where now it's where you continually meet with Him. A place where that whole burnt offering is offered of your life. Oh, today, say with me in consecration to the living God, with your heart, with your will, with your mind, with all that you are. Lord, all for you. I'm just going to live for you. Take my life, oh God. Let your fire burn in me. Let your Holy Ghost fire fall upon me. Let your life be made manifest to me. Your presence, oh God, is all that I desire. My will I leave behind. Your will, oh God, I take hold of now. Just begin to say with your own life, with your own heart, it's time for the great movings of God. It's time for the great power of God. It's time for nations to be shaken. It's time for the United States of America to be awakened. It's time now. It's time now. It's time now. It's time now. Let the fiery, fervent prayer of the righteous begin to be formed and shaped on the inside of you. Lay aside your filthy garments if you have any. Lay aside your own self-interest. Begin to take up with a heart cry out to God. His righteousness. Hallelujah. If you are sick in your body right now, if you're sick in your spirit, in your soul, in your mind, your heart, the healer is here to make you whole. The deliverer is here to deliver you. Oh, Kapata night. In the name of Jesus Christ, I take a hold of your lives. Everyone standing here. I deliver you from every influence of Satan, from the power of darkness. Right now, to be taken over completely into the realms of His divine power and glory. To begin to hunger and thirst after righteousness like never before. I break off the attachments of this world. I break off the affections of this world. I break it off of you right now in Jesus' name. By the power of the blood. By the power of His name. So that from this day forward, from this time forward, you begin to walk as those called by God, changed and transformed by His Spirit and by His power. With a word of life in your mouth. Hallelujah. I want you to just lift your hands towards heaven. Let God begin to touch you. He wants to touch you. Let God begin to touch you. If you've got sickness in your body, God wants to touch you. 
If you got pain in your body, God wants to touch you. If you got hurts and pain in your heart, if you got things blocking up the well that's keeping the rivers from flowing, God will heal you, touch you, deliver you right now. Begin to call out to Him. Holy Spirit, we ask you, make these things of heaven so real to us. Make these things of heaven so real to us. God, we ask you in your mercy and in your grace that upon every life that is standing here right now, those that are listening by the web or by the YouTube, that these things will become real. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I break off the strongholds of the lust of the flesh. I break off the power of pornography, Satan's primary weapon against God's people and against the world today. That foul thing, that addiction, that unholy thing, that immoral thing, I break its power in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, those things that belong to the realms of self-interest, that they'll become an area of shame instead of an area that we would pursue. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father, we thank you, God, for the working of your mighty power, for the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge, for the discerning of spirits. As much as for the working of miracles, the gifts of healing, the gift of faith. And, and, uh, and we thank you so much, Father. Yes, just lift your hands towards heaven. I see the power of God transforming lives. Those things that have held you back will hold you back no longer. Those of you who have weak arms, lift them up right now. You're being healed. Shoulders are being healed right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Feeble knees. Those who have injured knees being healed right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Right now, in Jesus' name, I see it happening. Just lift both hands towards heaven. Just lift both hands towards heaven. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Let there come a mighty wind of prayer. Let there come a mighty wind of praise. Let there come a mighty wind of thanksgiving. Let there come a mighty wind of your glory moving to our lives, O oh God. Yes, Father. Father, we thank you that Kerala will be shaken by the power of God. Kerala shaken by the power of the Holy Ghost. Many years ago, God made it so real to me that all the nation of India would be set on fire with the greatest outpouring of the Spirit of God that had ever been seen in the earth. It is going to happen. Many seeds from pray and hide to this day. Pray and hide prayed so hard for India. His heart was literally moved from one side of his chest to the other. Literally, literally anatomically moved. One man of God, one dear friend of mine that has been used by God to shake the nations of the earth was praying, saying, God, why did that happen to your servant? Hide. The Lord said, because he did the work that I called a hundred men to do, and he was the only one willing. Oh, he prayed, and all the prayers that he prayed for the nation of India are just as real and are just as valid and they because God has placed within our own lives in the ministry of Jesus an intercession for the nation see the uttermost parts of the earth <laughs> the uttermost parts of the earth that's the ministry of Jesus uh, we don't have a different one we have the same one hallelujah from the southern tip Kerala all the way to the Himalayas Seek him, shoot him, extra monahasi, boost by it, pull a satari, pull a cinemande, pull a masaya to ya, pull a masaya to ya. Father, we thank you for your great outpouring in South Asia. Haha, <laughs> Oh God, we thank you for your great outpouring throughout all Asia. Hallelujah. Father, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, that the that the statutes and the monuments 
that have stood for a thousand years have crumbled in your presence. Crumbled by your shakings. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that there would be in this place a remnant of those, oh God, who would begin to intercede for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in the United States of America. I was listening to the black community in Baltimore saying, talking about they have been disinherited. And they have no idea. They know nothing about Pop Seymour in April of, of, of 1906 who prayed down a glory upon this nation. They have no idea of their inheritance, their spiritual inheritance in this plan of, of the kingdom. So many people's eyes are set on the earthly thing. It's time for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ to rise up from Baltimore, Maryland, to San Diego, California, to begin to see things the way they really are, to begin to take charge. God gave us the ability to make disciples out of nations. It's nonsense. It's nonsense. God's made no difference between any man, anywhere, any, at any time. And especially at this time. It's time that you and I begin to rise up and take a hold of who we are and get an identity that belongs to heaven instead of some kind of earthly stupidity. It means nothing. Jesus, help us. We've, had, we've cleaved to things that are wrong. We've cleaved to filthy rags. We've cleaved to our beggar's garment. It's time like, to, like never before to be just like uh, blind Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, and cast away the beggar's garment. Cast away the earthly identity. It's time for us to rise up and take a hold of this righteousness in Christ Jesus and despise the filthy rags of self-justification. Always trying to make ourselves right in our own eyes. Well, it wasn't so bad, and I'm not any different from them over there or not. I pray that you'll burn with a holy indignation, so much so that you'll make a whip fashion like Jesus did and run it out your life. Run it out of your life. Run it out of your life. And say, and say, this is God's temple. It's a house of prayer. It's not a place of merchandise. We about our own lives. Today, our lives, you and me, now, us, the church, we the salt, we the remedy, we the savior, the solution, the answer, the manifest presence of Jesus in the earth. All we have to do is in sincerity and truth take hold of these things and God will make them happen. That's it. We pray, he sends fire. <laughs> we do the easy thing, he does the impossible. We participate, he works a miracle. Ah, Sumane. Hallelujah. Sumbra Kasamba.